addition to the out-of-pocket expenses, there are other reasons why people did not receive the care that they desired. Some of the reasons are related to whether or not a certain uh, provider took their insurance plan or whether the plan would pay for a service or whether the patient could afford their share of the bill. And other reasons are related to issues like uh, the ability to take time off of work, the ability to get an appointment, logistical barriers such as traveling, long drives to appointments. So there's many reasons why people are not getting the care that they need. And moving on to the cost containment strategies. So we know that prior authorization occurs for both treatments and diagnostic testing. So we asked the questions for both treatments and diagnostic uh, testing. So what we found was 45% of patients faced prior authorization for treatments and 37% for diagnostic testing. And as you might expect, there were higher rates of prior authorization for both treatments and diagnostic testing for those who have marketplace coverage. And what is interesting is that there are variations according to state. So for example, more people in Iowa had prior authorization for treatment, and more people in Florida had prior authorization for diagnostic testing, which likely reflect, reflects local coverage plans. And I, I, I'll say that we can tease into this in a lot more detail with the data that we have, but I just wanted to, to bring some points to your attention. Um, and I think this also really underlines the fact that place matters. And we also see that prior authorization is impacting direct patient care, as outlined here on this slide. It's leading to delays in care, it's lead, leading to unexpected out-of-pocket costs, and changes to treatment than what someone initially wanted or thought they were going to receive. Similarly, patients are also experiencing step approaches to both treatments and diagnostic testing. However, fewer patients experience step therapy than prior authorization. Interestingly, patients taking oral medicines seem to be more impact, impacted than those receiving IV treatment. When you look at this by coverage type, patients who are covered by private insurance were more impacted by STEP for treatments and diagnostic tests. And again, with STEP therapy, we see variation by state. In this case, more patients in Indiana are experiencing step therapy uh, for treatments and more in California for diagnostic testing. So concerning to us is the impact of this on patients. There was a full 52% that reported delays in treatment. Some of these delays were as large as seven to 30 days, which can be a huge difference for patients depending on um, their diagnosis. And as before, we also see the increased out-of-pocket expense for patients, and that patients are having to change treatments from the treatment that was originally prescribed to them because of the step therapy. And we also find that narrow networks are a potential avenue for cost containment. And this is what's interesting here. So 11% of respondents indi indicated difficulty in finding in-network specialists in their area. When we reflect on the top concerns about health insurance, several of those responses were related to concerns about narrow networks. So it's a, it's a legitimate concern. So finally, the conclusions. So what have we learned from our, our study and the report? We've learned that many aspects of the Affordable Care Act are working um, for patients, and some are not. So it's great that, that more people are covered, it's fantastic, and I think there's improvements that, that needs to be made so that people are actually receiving the care that they want and they can afford it. Overall, cost remains to be important for patients. There's few patients who are having conversations with care providers. Half are not receiving the psychosocial care that they need. Patients are experiencing delays in care. They're experiencing the increased out-of-pocket costs and a lack of adherence to therapy. So the cancer support community is committed, as I know a number, probably all of you in this room are, to ensuring that the patient voice is represented in every step of the decision-making process. And we're committed to minimizing access limitations and maximizing patient adherence. And we're also committed to continuing, continuing to partner to leverage and create resources for patients. Mm -hmm.